turn the air off. Anybody turn the air off? Air off. Mike, on me. Start on me. Ten. Broadcasting to you on WNN 1470 AM and TrentoVision.tv from the world's leading think tank laboratory, buried deep in an undisclosed building in hostile territory where evil and corruption is exposed. You're about to enter the Tom Trento Show. United West, a group that says it defends Western civilization against the onslaught of Islam. Uh, <laughs> two things. Two things today, okay? Um, you needed to be here about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> but I'm You're gonna not going to say what that. Uh, number one, welcome to my uh, living room. <laughs> welcome to my <laughs> new studio in my living room. Uh, you can see my drapes behind me. Um, and yes, we, uh, we are experimenting with different backgrounds. So um, to make your, uh, your, your visual sensibilities just dance in delight at the beautiful picture we deliver to you. How about that? And when I say beautiful picture, it's time to bring CJ. How's that? It's a trick. <laughs> it's a trick. <laughs> no, the trick. It's an optical delusion. That's a little too wide. We look like we're in a auditorium. We got to zoom in a little. We look like we're in Wayne's World's we basement. We have that technology. <laughs> we have that know-how. Yeah, there it is we Wayne's go. World. A little more. A little more. A little more. Tom's World. Tom's to World. Right that is right. Excellent. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, the the trick is what CJ did to me. About 10 seconds before the show started. Oh, yeah. We have, what as you do? know, what we have a do? very detailed script that we follow. <laughs> and the script is made by... Um, by masses Magic. Of masses, yes. masses of team of, by, of uh, research by individuals. By Jetta warriors <laughs> sitting on mountaintops. Damon they, and Mike, check your emails. <laughs> they deliver it to us. But occasionally, an item of interest finds its way in... Uh, apart from the script, and um, I think that's a, I think that's an item of interest. She she uh, <laughs> snuck something on me just before the show started. I, I just tried. saw it. What, what, what wormed your way into her your brain from her brain to yours? Well, I'll state it, then you can give the context. Okay. Let me look right into this camera, Mike. We. You guys check your emails, please. We. I got this like right now. I got this yeah. dramatically. Yeah, yeah, we. We are all. Muslims, we are. Wait, let me wait a minute. I gotta get of the course, where are you, where are we are all we born this way. Are all Muslims? Okay, explain what that is. Okay, well, that's a quote from Mayor Bloomberg <laughs> of New York <laughs> as he was addressing a Ramadan audience. Quote: We okay. are all Muslims. Oh, that's good to know. Yes. And he thinks we need to build a mosque at Ground Zero. Did he also include that in there? I know, I know he's always yeah. thought that. Did he include that in his little Ramadan? Uh, uh, did, did, did he do a Bamathon, Ramathon, dot Ramadan, Bamathon <laughs> update <laughs> with all the Muslims that we are? How about are we Muslims that blew up the Trade Center? He doesn't even call it a mosque. He, call it, he calls it a community center. A community center. A community center. Quote, is. the community center can and must be built at the Park 51 site. Anything less would be compromise. Anything less would compromise our commitment to fighting terror with freedom. <laughs> well, I'm sure that'll all change in, you know, if Mayor Weiner gets elected. <laughs> oh, do we have some wiener stuff for you later on, folks? Hi, everybody. Tom Trento here, Trento Vision. 
Um, Wednesday, today's Wednesday, correct? Wednesday the 23rd, 4th, what is the date? Right there, 24th. By the way, he finished his speech by quoting Iman Faisal Abdul, Abdul Rauf. 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 Yeah. Rauf. Uh, you know, yes. um, these battles are never over. And his many quotes of us from an interfaith memorial service for Daniel Pearl. Oh, great. Oh. Um, what, say that yeah. again? Th those were... Ralph's comments at an interfaith memorial service for Daniel Pearl is what Bloomberg break. quoted at the end of his Ramadan chat. Give me a break. No. Can you imagine? Daniel Pearl's the guy for all you listening. He got his head chopped off by Muslim jihadis. Yes. Yeah, by um, uh, Al-Zwahari. Al Al-Zwahari, who was the, uh, the uh, Iraqi jihadi, bragged and cutting his head off. It was part of a plot with Sheikh Jalani. And videotaped it. Um, yeah, and videotaped it. And the but this lovely is how KSM. Stupid, this is how stupid Bloomberg is. Yeah. He's a first-class idiot. He doesn't understand Islamic jihad. He doesn't understand the threat. You never make statements like that, which now are enshrined in the Islamic world as, oh, great, we own New York City right now with that dopey mayor. But you know what? His term is up, and um, right. Anthony uh, Al Jazwini. Yeah. Al Jazwini. Anthony Al Gorzwini. Al Jazwini. <laughs> um, we got that story coming up. Al Gorzwini. Let, let, um, uh, let me talk privately to you guys out there. Okay, privately. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I put a schedule together with pinpoint accuracy, time wise, down to the second, but we don't seem to hit it. Um, why? All the big mouths in here that want to talk and talk and talk and talk. But you let, gotta let you gotta find <laughs> the muse and let the muse work, okay? But the muse go back in the bottle right now because I gotta say hello to everybody. Hi everybody, Tom Trento, CJ. Hi. The boys over there, Wednesday, hello. 24 July. Hot, steamy, muggy, wet in Florida. So if you're thinking of coming down here, just send your money and go someplace else, okay? But no, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful state. Uh, WNN 1470, that's our 50,000 watt radio station, our flagship station uh, based in Boca Raton. We are no longer there. We used to operate out of the station. We now have an underground bunker off the coast. We have to take a, um, a barge out. Actually, there's a barge there. It looks like the, it's doing construction work. We take these high-speed boats out that are stealth, you can't do any radar on them. We get on the, the barge <laughs> and we dress in oily work clothes, but we actually go down 400 feet below the ocean floor. And uh, that's where we are. So it's safe and sound and quiet. So we don't know what the we're hell. We're 20,000 leagues under the sea. Under the sea, yeah. yeah. And uh, we're journeying to the center of the earth. So uh, WNN 1470, but if you are interested in watching all this stuff, which you should be, because we do a lot of visuals. Trentovision.tv, our good friends over at Tea Party Community. We are mobilizing an army of workers for 400 and how many days? 469 69. days from today, November 4 election. And Tea Party Community is one of our activism partners on that, as are other organizations like American Majority with uh, Scott, Scott Spages, Spages, who mm -hmm. will be, who was on yesterday. That was yesterday, days, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's on Gosh, yesterday. the time too. flies. See how that works? He's on yesterday because today's Wednesday. Right. Oh, yeah, see how that works? We got that right. We got it right, yeah. <laughs> uh, inside <laughs> joke, folks. Um, but uh, uh, bare naked Islam, go there hard. If, if your oh, stomach man. can handle Islamic Jihad and its full articulation, go to bare, B-A-R-E, naked Islam dot com. And uh, our good friend Bonnie up in um, Alaska someplace, wherever she is, uh, has commentary and unbelievable videos that just are, are depressing and, and aggravating and motivating to fight this battle. But uh, Israel, leaving in about two months, uh, a little over two months, uh, July, August, September, two months, two weeks or so from today, we are going to Israel. You got a couple of uh, seats still open up. It's about 25, 2600 bucks plus your airfare. Tom at trentovision.tv. Fabulous 10 day trip. I mean, you're going to be in Israel in the middle of like.
the world going nuts. What better place to be to experience all of this and the safety and security uh, of the IDF in Israel and the National Police? Cool trip. You got to come. Um, sell, sell something on eBay or whatever you do to make the money to come. We got a couple of items today. Um, what do, we, do we have any special guests? No. Tomorrow. Yes, yes we do. Yeah, one holding. Well, he's not special. He's special Whoa. to me. He's one of us. He's one of us. Tomorrow we you have. You guys a take guest. us for granted. No, Friday we have a special guest. Friday we have Diana West on Jum Jumpin' Juma Freaky Yeah, Friday. but you told her to be one of us, so does that mean oh, she's no, that no longer really special? Count. You well, can't we have, have it McDaniels. both ways. We have Randy McDaniel's Friday. Tomorrow, Thursday, Claire Lopez. Uh, our Savannah trip, where she did a national security briefing that will knock your socks off on the Muslim Brotherhood. Tomorrow, Thursday, Claire Lopez, right here, Trento Vision, 5 to 6. What else do we have, CJ, for our house cleaning? For 5 to 6. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where can they listen to us? iHeartRadio. Um, iHeartRadio, 1470 AM, WNN. Where can they watch us? Trentovision.tv. Mm -hmm. And they can watch the archives at youtube.com slash the United West. That's it. And where can they tweet you? At the, at United, the United West. West. Need you to do that. And where can, and they, where can they donate, That's most importantly, thing. because we know you're really amused by all the musings around here. And that would be at trentovision.tv. Yeah, you can do it there. And you could go to the unitedwest.org. Amen. All right, good stuff. Now, where's that not so special person? Is he with us? I got him. All right. Um, I got him. I got him. Uh, yes, uh, he is obviously very special to us. Alan Corman up in the uh, central Florida area. Alan, last week, if you remember, brought us the uh, information about the Zionistas, then Sandy um, Solomon was on telling us a little more about it. What was she was Zionistas? really good. Yeah, was good. The Zionistas are fashion-forward Zionists. Okay. Christians and Jews. And their featured speaker this past Sunday was none other than our special guest. Tell us about it, Alan. Well, I am happy to be here. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank Mayor Bloomberg, for saying that we're all Muslims, <laughs> and in his honor, I will give you the traditional Islamic greeting, Wassalam Aleichem, my brothers and sisters. Wassalam <laughs> I thought we were all Trayvon, but that's okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we're all everybody, except ourselves, okay? What a stupid world. Yes, Alan. What, what, well, uh, yeah, tell us about uh, Zionistas. Well, the meeting, Tom, was excellent. The numbers were large. There were 35 to 40 people wow. cramped to a house meeting. And it was the, uh, the audience was a combination of both Christians and Jews, roughly equal. And it is something that I haven't seen in quite a long time, is where the Christians and Jews are united in a singular purpose, the protection, security, and long life of Israel. Amen. Wow, pretty cool. Very cool. And what was your message about? What I talked about uh, was the Muslim Brotherhood and as a shared common enemy to both Israel and the United States. And if you look at the second paragraph of the Hamas Charter, it states, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. And that quote, many people hadn't heard scared them to death, the fact that it was in the second paragraph of the Hamas Charter, which is beyond doubt, a Muslim Brotherhood organization is a direct link with facts and exhibit one, that there is a combination and a link between the Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, and the United States of America. And this is a profound message that reached these people it made them even more resolute in their desire to protect the state of Israel. Amen. Amen. That right. Hamas charter is still in effect, right? It hasn't been uh, amended in any way? No, CJ, and that's what's amazing. John Kerry is over there looking for a uh, non-existent peace formula. Right. The first, there can never be any peace until Hamas removes that covenant from their charter which isn't even on the table. Everything else is moot and waste of time. 
Well, on Friday's show, we talk about John Kerry in his quest <laughs> for, uh, his quest for uh, over here, his quest for peace. We talk about John Kerry, and uh, that's Friday. All right, Alan, if uh, somebody wants to get in touch with you or one of the Zionistas, uh, how do they do that? And then I have one more question before we let you go. Okay, uh, go to, uh, you can email the Zionistas at Zionistas numeral one at gmail.com, or you can reach me at Alan, A-L-A-N, at theunitedwest.org. Okay, in that you were the speaker for the Fashion Forward Zionists. Armani, Versace, what was it? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yeah, like he would know. <laughs> in that you were the speaker for the Fashion Forward Zionists. Were you, were you Armani? Were you Versace? Were you Valentino? Um, or were you uh, Target? I was a combination of all three, <laughs> dressed very sharply, I might add. And uh, that was one of the highlights I was told from the meeting. Very cool. All we need a picture. That, he wore, you look. <laughs> folks, he wore Armani, Versace, and Valentino all at once. That would be very interesting. Uh, Mix in a former life, I used to actually have those suits. I know you gave me one of your. Uh, life. You gave me one of your Armani tops. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I was taking a cue from our Muslimhood brother friends and. Muslimhood brother. <laughs> I like that. Who are, who are who are Muslim Brotherhood in Armani suits? So they look like us, they talk like us, and they keep their politics hidden deep with yes, deception. They do. Oaken mirrors. The Armani Jihadis. The Armani Jihadis. There it is from Imam uh, Abdul. All right. Thank you very much, Alan. Doing great work up there. Um, and uh, you have a show on Monday nights. Tell everybody quickly about your show. Uh, well, it's a show called the Radio Jihad Network. And Ooh, uh, I love seven, it. Yes, seven days a week. So uh, listen in. Uh, the Radio Jihad Network. Radio Jihad Network. Excellent. All right, folks, Alan Kornman uh, up there. Thank you, Alan. Nice his, to see you almost. His Zionista uh, routine. I've right, got to um, have one clarification. You know, we do these shows, yesterday's show, uh, actually Monday Monday's show. Monday's show. Monday's show. Um, we, uh, we, we threw out some statistics regarding uh, the murder rate in the black community, and I confused it a little bit, and then... Some of the viewers were a little confused, but I've sorted it out. There's, there's just a couple of numbers you need to know. And the main number, and these, there's two, there's several, taking a step back, all this Trayvon, all this Trayvon Martin stuff um, with, with the race hustlers as C.L. Bryant, a friend of mine, a black uh, pastor out of Atlanta, he calls them race hustlers. Jesse Jackson, Farrakhan, um, Al Sharpton, uh, so much academic work has been done on the failure in the black community of, uh, of the family structure, of education, all of this, that there are real problems that cause uh, a life of crime, and the race hustlers don't want to look at that. And, and there's a tremendous body of academic material that can be mined properly. They want to uh, fuel their chaotic um, operations and raise donations. They're very much like the Southern Poverty Law Center. Create a crisis, go to your dumb donors, raise right. money to save Trayvon because we're right. all Muslims. Or wait, we're all Trayvon, whatever right. we all are in the left today. Yeah. The left is we're always all somebody. In Trayvon, we're Muslim? Unbelievable. Well, you know, who knows? Uh, we, everything is one. So the whole world is one. There's no distinction anymore. In any event, the real numbers by several uh, federal departments, whether it's the Justice Department or whether it's the Statistics Department, uh, is that the, the, the black community is, is about 13 percent, 12 and a half, 13 percent in the United States. And there are um, approximately 18,000 murders per year in the United States. 18,000 people are murdered. And so many people are murdered. Boom, somebody kills with guns or something else, somebody. Of those, 9,000 of those murders are black people. What's the first issue that jumps out? 
with that? Anybody knows that thirteen percent of the population um, is half of the homicide victims, victims. in this right. country. So something's crazy there. Now you take that you take that fifty percent category. Fifty percent of the eighteen thousand killed every year in America are black, but they're only thirteen percent of the population. Ninety to ninety-five percent of the killers of that 9,000 are? Black. Black people. Right. So. Um, That's what I said when yeah, I was making the we, correction. We, we kind of sorted it out, yeah. but uh, I wanted to make it crystal clear that that seems to be a pretty big looming problem. Yeah, there's, that, is that from, um, yeah. That's a great uh, study that we have on the screen right now from The Blaze. Uh, actually, Tammy, what's her name? Um, Tiffany. Gabe, Tiffany Gabe put this together on the Blaze a couple of days ago, Glenn Beck's uh, site. So the bottom line, um, forget about all this Trayvon Martin nonsense uh, in terms of civil rights and all that. If anything, Trayvon Martin, if you want to honor his life, our black friends in the black community, if you want to do something that is honoring indeed, then use this to take a serious look at the systemic, the very deep problems in the black community, the destruction of the family, the falling away from church, all of these issues, these cultural issues that can stabilize a family. That's where these idiots, uh, these race hustlers ought to be paying attention. So. Well, they would be if they actually cared about their community, yeah. but I don't think well, that's what their people, agenda is. Other people need to rise up. Other people need to rise up then. You know, there's a, there's a well, lot they do. Of they rise up on the left and they say that the problem is that the government doesn't put enough money into these communities. So we get taxed more and we have more government programs, bigger government programs at the state, local and federal levels to go into these communities to fix things that are up to the individual, the individual and a family and a community and a church or whatever have you. That's where it starts. And that's the problem nice. is... If I may add to yeah. this, okay? The problem is that this bloated social service system in this country is, is largely run at the bureaucratic level by a lot of middle class blacks who formerly or in, in their heritage were victims of poverty and they pulled themselves out of that poverty into the middle class by becoming bureaucrats and they have a vested interest in having a permanent constituency to serve otherwise there's no point to having these programs therefore there's no point for them to be employed in these programs do you see the connection i here? see it i see it um, i absolutely see it and uh, hopefully we can help our audience see it, understand it too, at uh, 23 minutes after five o'clock on the 24th, Wednesday, July. Uh, Damon, put down on our list of people to bring on the show, Kevin Jackson. He's a black conservative, oh. wonderful guy. Yeah. Uh, C.L. Letty, C.L. Bryant, oh. wonderful uh, black conservative. And, and even uh, O'Neill Dozier. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Pastor Dozier. Will come and also, and that woman, your out. debate partner, too. Who's that debate partner that you had? Oh, uh, Janique. Janique. Yeah. That we should bring, we should bring Janique on. We should bring her yes. in the studio, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, put Janique down. So, um, and. Uh, so replace, replace CJ with her. So with Janique. <laughs> <laughs> replace me with Janique. Yeah, good luck with that. She has a real life, guys. <laughs> I'm going where? <laughs> and he want me in the bunker what? for what? The temperature is what? There's no AC? Are you kidding? What's the pay? What's the pay? <laughs> Click. Click. <laughs> uh, no, she's a great lady. All right, so where are we? 24 minutes after yeah. 5 o'clock Wednesday, July um, 24th. Uh, hey, 24 and 24. And I've uh, got a lot of stuff going on. Right now we want to bring you some other crazy stuff. Other crazy stuff. Um, we're gonna we're gonna focus on Syria in a little bit because there's some um, happenings there that are not good, affecting everybody's life. But we we got to kind of work our way to Syria, show you some other crazy stuff. Like I don't know if you're a Jewish kid from America, um, we're not letting you into the United Kingdom, huh? What? what? If you're a Jewish kid from America, we're not letting you into the United Kingdom. If if 
if you've spent any extended time in Israel. Okay, I'm looking at that. If you've spent any extended time. Uh, if you've spent any extended <laughs> time into, uh, in, in Israel, we're not letting you into the United Kingdom. Do we have, I think we have a little piece of video. This is a bizarre story, and uh, we want to highlight it because uh, England is a, is a confused country, folks. Um, a very confused country. And uh, it, it, it has these pockets of um, anti-Semitism that are really, really bad. Pockets? Yeah, pockets. <laughs> I mean, there's some very Are good stuff kidding? going on in England. And then, then this, this... There's pockets of good things, and the rest of it is okay, anti-Semitic. Right. Now, take a look at this crazy video. Here we go. A Kansas college student believes he was racially profiled as he traveled overseas. He calls it anti-Semitism. KMBC 9's Scott McDonald is live with a troubling encounter with customs. Scott? That's right. Chip Cantor's trip started here, but when he got to the U.K., he was thrown in a cell, turned around, and sent back here to Kansas City. He was given no explanation as to why, leading him to believe the only reason he was sent back was because he's Jewish. We're going everywhere we can think of with this story in terms of... At 23 years old, Chip Cantor had his trip to the UK planned for a long time. A few months interning and also raising money for a child in need. All was well until he hit the customs counter at Heathrow. She started flipping through my passport. She got to my two pages full of Israeli visas because I spent my freshman year studying abroad in Israel. Next thing I know, she's gone. And from there, he says the interrogation and anti-Semitic behavior ramped up. He said that he needed to look through my wallet to see how much money I had and my credit cards. And he made a comment that I bet you'll have a lot of money in your wallet. And it was then that I put one plus one together and said, this reeks of anti-Semitism. We appreciate your getting the word out. Chip's father tried unsuccessfully to talk reason into the security officials at the airport, who were not government workers but private contractors. He says he got hung up on. At this point, he walked over to Chip and said, your dad just hung up the phone on me, typical for an American. For close to nine hours, he was held in a cell, denied requests for food or water. Trying to figure out why he's being held for no apparent reason, he pinpoints prejudice. And his dad, Chuck Cantor, wants answers. It's very, very troublesome, I think, as, he, as an American citizen, to have my son treated this way. Now, legally, Chip had more than enough documentation to enter into the U.K. He told us he was fingerprinted and at one point told by officials there that his name has now been entered into a, a database that's going to make it more difficult for him to travel in the future. That's the latest for now. Reporting live, Scott McDonald, KNBC 9 News. All right. Thank you, Scott. Now, Chip this, and his father this have just happened. This just happened a couple of days ago, folks. In the United Kingdom, which is a, uh, an extension of the United States and many respects. What do, you, what do you make out of that? <laughs> um, this was right around the time, actually, that Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer were banned from entering Britain. And I read an article um, it, uh, which expanded further on, on this young man's experience, and some Muslim woman walked up to him and told him several things, and she was, she was part of the the back store, part of the security in so the back the there, reason? yeah. There was a reason. They never gave him a reason. Flying while Jewish. Flying, Flying while, while Jewish. Jewish. Oh, yeah. Abdullah, let me ask you. Yes. You, the, there were, this is a private uh, organization that does the uh, security at Heathrow. What do you think about this? I see nothing wrong with this. I would not want Jews in my airport either. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's honest. Yeah. Um, I got an email today, parenthetically, about a three-part special that's going to be on PBS about uh, Mohammed. Who? Uh, starting the 20th. Uh, Mohammed who? Mohammed Ali. Oh, the Mohammed? The Mohammed. The Mohammed. Three-part Piba. special. And Piba, all Piba. the scholars and, and, and writers and directors that made the movie live in England or the United States. Right. Right. Um, None of these people that do this kind of work live in these <laughs> in the countries where all of this is from. That's how horrible these countries are. But you don't you don't want Jewish people in your uh, your town your country either. I have no problem with keeping the Jews out. 
Yeah. It, uh, they were ex- uh, 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 the United Kingdom has be- definitely become a, a Muslim land. Um, that I mean, he yeah, spent you can't time. disagree. And we know with that. that you cannot have Jews in Muslim lands, so time to go. Yeah, I mean, they were expelled. Shalom, before. as they say. <laughs> <laughs> alert! This is Shalom, an alert, y'all, for all you Jewish travelers uh, who have spent time in Israel. He went to school there for a while, trying to get into uh, Western countries in Europe now. Maybe a difficult situation. Unbelievably crazy. It used to be, I don't know if it still is, but it used to be you couldn't um, you couldn't get into the Soviet Union if your passport had an Israeli stamp on it. Well, well, how long ago was that? Well, the Soviet Union's not been gone for a long time. Um, oh, you know, since the uh, 91, 92, 93. Yeah. So they, there was no reason given for, for all this? Nothing? No, that's no why explanation. They went to the news. That's why no the explanation. Yeah. But why did they have to go to the news? Why didn't our State Department investigate it? <laughs> <laughs> did you hear what she said? <laughs> She's a silly little girl. Silly little I silly. mean, wouldn't that be logical? <laughs> and how come nobody ever brought that up? You know why? Because they went to the State Department, and the State Department probably told them Took to shut up. Well, here's yeah. the solution. We'll take a pass on. We'll take a pass on that prosecution. <laughs> I have a solution right, for right, the right. problem. All uh, the world has to do is help get Anthony Weiner elected as the next mayor in New York City. You hear what I'm saying, world? All you got to do is help get Anthony Weiner elected mayor. Did you know he was running for mayor? Yes, he's actually leading in the polls. Um, what is wrong? Do we have an update? I, you know, I, I was thinking about He's this. He's beating the, the Jewish one, the, uh, the Jewish uh, <laughs> attorney. My, I, told, I told my wife, Jessica, she, she, goes, uh, she goes, come on, just on a pure emotional basis, come on, New York, have some respect. You want, to, you want, you want your mayor to be called Mayor Wiener? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. you want the first pitch of the Yankees... Uh, next, the uh, Mayor Wiener is going to throw out the first pitch. To yeah, it won't be the Pope Mobile; it'll be the Wiener Mobile. <laughs> the Wiener Mobile as the as <laughs> Eric Holder is going to be the Vice Mayor. Uh, oh, <laughs> Wiener Holder. <laughs> Wiener Holder. Oh. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, did you did you see the thing with Wiener in the gay pride parade? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually that's a true. Sir, uh, we should brought up the video. There, he's at the gay bride. <laughs> I thought, I thought he was, this is a true a camel and a he's penguin and Wiener walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So Wiener has the gay pride flag, which is about 50 miles wide. It's a huge flag. And he's holding up, walking down the middle of, uh, of the street. And the crowd's chanting, the gay pride parade, Wiener, Wiener, Wiener. This is for real? This is for real. Well, I, I changed my mind. I think New York needs to elect Wiener because we will have unlimited material. It, it would unlimited prove to us material. at any at any rate. Unlimited material. It would prove to us at any rate that New Yorkers do, in fact, have, have a sense of humor. <laughs> but here's, here's a more interesting uh, issue as, as it relates our national security concerns. Guess who wrote him a check for what? Forty one hundred bucks? How much was Hillary? No, Hillary Clinton. Was, no. Wrote him a check for um, Al uh, Forty nine fifty. That's the max. Yeah. The max. The max yeah. Guess who wrote? Guess who wrote? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's on the screen. You don't Al, have to guess if you're watching Al the show. Al Gore zero. <laughs> yep. Uh, the um, a a lobbyist a lobbyist from uh, Al Jazeera. The newspaper, which is now coming into the United States. Why? Because of Al Gore. Al Gore had Current TV mm-hmm. and his little mm-hmm. group of cronies, uh, one of whom was the husband Blumenthal, the husband of, uh, Nan- of um, Diane Feinstein. Yes. Yeah, Diane Feinstein's husband, Richard Blumenthal, was w- one of the individuals on the current uh, investor uh, list. Mm-hmm. They sold a little goofy company that was worth $3.00. They sold it to Al Jazeera, coming out of uh, Qatar, the, the, the television network for the um, Sunni Muslims, basically. Otherwise known as Al Jihad TV. Al Jihad TV. And now they have lobbyists all over the world. Well, oh, yeah. a lobbyist in New York wrote Wiener a check for 4950 An Al Jazeera lobbyist yeah. gave money to the next mayor of New York. What do you and think about that? And he took it. And he well, took it. And he took it. Well, well of course, what, what his is wife... Problem? He is convert to Muslim anyway. Well, Al Jazeera is the Muslim Brotherhood's network, 
and mm -hmm. Anthony Weiner is married to the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. So Huma Huma why are you sounding so, so shocked and why surprised it over be there a at surprise? the table? What is the shock and surprise? Well, uh, actually, you make a very good point, uh, Imam Abdullah. Um, we're, we're quickly getting to the point here in the, uh, in the United States where this stuff shouldn't surprise us. It should be just the way it is. And those who don't do the, the kind of analytical work that we do and, and are on the leading edge of this stuff, they just probably go, that's the way it is. I mean, Al Jazeera is another organization. Just another terrorist organization. It has it a is right the to exist outlet. like anyone else. It is the um, media <laughs> wing of a terrorist organization. And, and uh, it is funding the, possibly the next mayor of New York City, which was the victim of the greatest terrorist attack in American history. Is what does not make sense? Put it this way. America's mayor really was Rudy Giuliani, okay? He turned down that $10 million check after 9-11 and said, go, right. go take your Saudi money and shove it up your you-know-what. Boy, did I which hand that? would you use for okay. that? Okay, yeah, which hand would you use for that? <laughs> and uh, Reliance, where and are said you no, thank you. Would w w and this guy, this punk, Anthony Weiner, takes five thousand dollars from Al Jazeera. I mean, if that isn't a low rent sellout, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that on is. its face is, is absurd from this organization. But uh, folks, the the national security point that we want to impress here is that Anthony Weiner's wife, Uma H-U-M-A, Abedin, is a uh, card-carrying Muslim sister. She probably has hit her card, but her family is mobbed up in the brotherhood, in the sisterhood. She has been placed as an operative. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of material on this. She now, you said, Mark, that he's in, he's in the lead for the election? Oh, yeah, by far. Oh, yeah. By far. He, he's he's like beating the Jewish one. He's, ten, he's beating the he, Jewish he's one. He's 10 points up on the Democratic ticket inside there. So it's and a good now, chance. Now, here's the point. Yeah, we're all laughing about Wiener being mayor and everything like that. But if he wins a Democratic ticket and New York's a Democrat town, mm -hmm. there's a good chance you might have a Wiener for, for mayor of New York. You already do a little one now. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean that isn't that what you said? Yeah, yeah. So we might have a, you know, oh, no. a wiener for, for mayor of New York. I was saying. calling Bloomberg one. <laughs> so a wiener will replace a wiener. Right? You're right. All right. There's a lot of wiener <laughs> jokes. Hold on, I'm getting lost on the wiener jokes here. No, but, I was. I was dead but from about it. from a national security perspective, we would have the first lady of New York position in the in the middle of the uh, intelligence capability of the number one anti-terrorism law enforcement it, it's, uh, department it's on the face of the earth. I okay? mean, New York is the number one anti and counter-terrorism department on the face of the earth as a police department, not as a special forces or anything that. I mean, they are light years ahead of everybody. So she will be in the middle of that intelligence apparatus. That's why Al Jazeera yeah. is starting to write checks for and this we, we is, gotta watch It's this completely closely. insane. I mean, come on, New York. Do you, do you not even remember 9-11, the, the Boston bombing, everything? You're, you're, you're giving the keys of the city over to the Muslim Brotherhood, all the, all the bad guys. You think you have bad Muslims in New York now? Wait till they become uh, mayor and, and, and first lady. It'll be <laughs> head of counterterrorism. <laughs> She'll be the head uh, of counterterrorism. It's uh, it's insane. I mean, you 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 could not have a worse. Even Obama wouldn't be as bad as as that. You know, well, yeah, it's madness. Right. It's but they are both Muslims. It's well, sheer madness. The red light. It's sheer madness. And um, uh, not only is there madness in New York City, but there's madness in the Middle East, all over the Middle East. So we're going to go from New York City. Um, we're going to keep our eye on, on, segue. The, on the Wiener campaign there. Yeah. Um, we're going to go from New York City to the to the madness in the Middle East. We've got a couple of things. Can we talk about happen. Qatar, like Qatar? really quick? Just yeah, say yeah. something yeah, really quick, quick about Qatar. Qatar. Is right okay. Here, folks. Qatar okay. is like the biggest funder of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh -huh. Qatar country. jails women who report rapes, mm -hmm. as they just recently did. Um, the woman from Norway. Janet Jackson's husband fired her. 
for that, that. that by the way. Yeah. Um, This is not the bastion of free speech and liberty and civil liberties for anybody. And why they should even be a news organization in the United States to begin with and own a network in the United States needs to be investigated. That That investigation went very far. Yeah, that went broom, like a rock. Hey, yeah, just getting back to the last uh, previous story real quick. Saudi Airlines defends ban on Israeli passengers. What, what is... Uh, what, yeah, we need you can't even... You can't... If you're Saudis flying to aren't Turkey, allowed in you can't Israel even either. fly into Saudi Arabia. You can't catch a flight. You can't spend five minutes in the airport to switch planes if you have an Israeli air passport. No. Well, okay. is, it, is it payback? Do the Israelis ban Saudis from coming into the country? You can't go into Israel with a Saudi um, passport. Does a smorgasbord ban a fat right. person? Why can't you go into Israel with a Saudi passport? Because they don't have diplomatic relations. Oh, so they're, so they're not flying into each other's countries. They're not flying into each other's countries. Wait, are you telling me no one with a Saudi passport can go into Israel? Well, they make it special dispensations or something like pre-approved through diplomatic channels or something like that. But I don't think I the do Saudis can travel to Israel. On national security issues to deal with uh, Iran and Egypt. But we need to check into some of the flying stuff because uh, it may not be as uh, as as maddening as uh, as it sounds. At 42 minutes after 5 o'clock Wednesday, the 24th, if you're driving in your cars and Florida, South or Central Florida, you're listening to Tom Trento, my co-host here, CJ, the boys back here, Mike, Damon, Mark, and uh, Imam Abdullah is with us. We do national security radio. We make jihad fun, though. We hit you with a lot of heavy stuff, but uh, uh, we try to look at the absurdities of life so that you don't uh, jump off the closest bridge, looking at how difficult the world is right now and how, uh, how much ahead the bad guys are in this war on terror, when we have the mayor of New York saying we're all Muslims and we need a mosque at ground zero, I mean, how crazy can it get? But let's go to the madness in the Middle East. Let's go to that wonderful example of democracy where we, uh, we shed blood and treasure uh, in Iraq, uh, ridding 25 million human beings, Iraqi citizens, 25 million, ridding them of a totalitarian, brutal, uh, dictator who sought his own uh, aggrandizement to the demise of his citizens. So we sent our boys, our girls in, freed the country, and um, that was good. The military did what they what they're supposed to do. Then the State Department goes in and uh, basically erases the military victory by agreeing to give a um, a, a con- uh, to participate in the construction of a Sharia compliant constitution um, to, the, to, the, uh, to the Iraqis. Uh, at that point, many of us said, you gotta be kidding me. This thing has nowhere to go but down at this point. Right. And um, we're not gonna do an analysis on how bad Iraq is, but this one story, you have, a, you have the Abu Ghraib story? Yep. Oh, you all remember we, we that. that one. Yeah, what, give us the background, CJ. You remember that? Abu, Abu Ghraib? Ghraib, the prison where prisoners were actually treated like prisoners by members of the American military. Oh, no, they also had to pledge a little bit in the fraternity. They were hazed. Yeah, they were while. hazed. They had to walk around in their underwear or something like right. that. And that became the rallying cry for the left against Bush and against the war in Iraq was the horrible treatment of the prisoners at Abu Ghraib that was the rallying point for them before we had Gitmo. Yeah, and, and, uh, and Abu Ghraib, we apolo- instead of saying, hey, get lost, everybody. You know, the, the boys got a little... Uh, little a little, little rambunctious. A little rambunctious, a little too much yeah. testosterone, maybe. Um, but uh, it could be real worse, okay? So let's just, everybody calm down. This is war. And, uh, it was not and mass. Yeah, things. it was not mass beatings and tortures and starvations or anything like that. In other words, it wasn't like they were actually in an Iraqi prison. No. <laughs> okay, they it, were in an American prison in Iraq, effectively, and under as, the protection as we, of America. As we uh, detached uh, and left Iraq, when as soon as uh, Obama came in, 2009, 2010, January, he had everybody just. Get out, there was a huge vacuum. We had our, our uh, salute to the military, January 2010. Was it 10 or 11? Um, 
when was that? Maybe 11. When when we did our salute to the military? Up in uh, Tallahassee. It was 10. That was, was 10? 10? Was no, it 11, 10? I no, I think it was, it was 11. 11. That's 11. Two years yeah. Ago, two years ago, yeah. 2011, two years ago. And, um, and the country has uh, reverted to a Sharia-compliant, Shia-led, Sunni-conflicted uh, conflagration of uh, low-grade war, nothing else. Uh, read, read what happened at Abu Ghraib yesterday, day before yesterday. Yesterday. Hundreds of convicts, I'll, I'll cover it, including senior members of Al-Qaeda. So they're still using the prison. They're still putting bad people in there. And you're right, they're beating the hell out of these people now, yeah. unlike the way we treat them. Broke out of Iraq's Abu Ghraib jail as, com as comrades launched a military-style assault to free them. And there was a raid, there were suicide bombers, um, there was a whole attack, and uh, how many were, were out? Hundreds. Like 500. 500? Majority Al-Qaeda serving life sentences. Al-Qaeda is what branch of the religion of peace during, during Ramadan? <laughs> <laughs> during, during the religion of peace is a wonderful time uh, of uh, I th hold it begins with uh, I think an I and it's not in the uh, it's not it's, well no the, uh, the, the Al-Qaeda are Sunnis they're Sunni Muslims yes of course well they're, they're Islamic first well they're, they're Islamic Sunni but second. they're Sunni Muslims and the government of Iraq is Shia led so the the practitioners and the, uh, the guards at, at uh, the prison are Shia for the most part Sunnis are in a war against the Shia. How do the Muslims fight Muslims during the holy month of Ramadan? Um, with bombs. They celebrate with, <laughs> bombs. with a bombathon. With a bombathon. Ramadan bombathon. On this day, uh, do you have a bombathon, Ramadan? Uh, well, I have through day 15, but there's an interesting twist to the, uh, the, to the scorecard. Today? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. We have an expansion. Scorecard? Yeah, we oh, have. First of all, we have an expansion of the chart. It's no uh -oh. longer just terror attacks and dead bodies. It now includes the wounded. Oh. So, um, so at halfway. Why include the wounded? Only the dead. No. So at halfway through, we now have. Um, at halfway through the at month of two. Ramadan, <laughs> yeah, we already have um, 662 dead bodies. 1,220 wounded and uh, 117 terror attacks. Now, dead bodies and wounded usually averages out to about 2,000 a month. Yeah, I think you okay. may be behind or that, that chart. I said it was behind. only through accurate through day 15. So I, so okay. I am behind. It's well, gonna be, to there's going to be more. On this uh, Abu Ghraib report, yeah. nearly 600 people have been killed in militant attacks across Iraq so far this month. Right. 600 just in Iraq. Yes. According to violence monitoring by the Iraqi Body Count. That's another group, the Iraqi Body Count. Oh, yeah. So how is the dead bodies only 662 if Iraq's looking at 600 on Because themselves? Ramadan started 15 days ago, so it doesn't go back to the beginning oh. of the month. Oh. Okay. okay. Lunar. All right, they had a head start, start. Uh, head start in Iraq, oh, so a like a 10-day head start. Ooh, man. Oh, man. So what and was that? I saw that one little one star. Yeah, there is an asterisk. What, what's the one asterisk There is about? Um, okay. one yeah. alleged terror attack by an Islamophobe. Um, the other day during <laughs> oh, really? Ramadan, a bomb was placed near a mosque in England by a Ukrainian, really? which actually caused no injuries or deaths. But, but it wasn't a terror but, attack. But it was listed One of by yours, the religion Trento of peace.com <laughs> as a terror attack <laughs> because it was a bomb you. and it was near a mosque. The Ayatollah of Islamophobia has his disciples planting bombs at mosques. <laughs> Very yeah. bad man. It's our uh, Very bad man. But I have to story in MSNBC. But I have to say that um, that Ukraine they're Ukraine listing division. it as a terror attack, um, even though they don't include attacks by Islamic terrorists unless they result in actual casualties. Oh, okay. Okay, well, the so, so they go out of their way to try to find anybody from another religion or an Islamophobe who commits a terrorist act, and no matter how minor, whatever it is <laughs> that this person does, even if there's no damage at all, okay. they'll include it in well, the chart in fairness. How do you know, do you know the guy, whatever an Islamophobe is, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, how do you know that guy was an Islamophobe? Well, I don't know. I mean, that would be him. something that I would question on the chart because I don't know if he was doing it in the name of another yeah, exactly, religion yeah. or if he's an Islamophobe or... But um, but it could have something to okay. do with his interview with the police. Well, we got at least of, put something on our scorecard. Of I hate those. I <laughs> hate. <laughs> I, 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 I hate those Muslims. Muslims. I'm so scared period. of those Muslims. That's why I did it. Yeah, they got They got to put something on yeah. the Islamophobe scorecard. Yeah. Well, here's the sad <laughs> part in Iraq, folks. And and again, um, we have a on the non-humorous larger uh, macro picture. There's a serious uh, alignment taking place uh, of Iran with Iraq. And there's a reason for that. They're neighboring countries. And Iran is getting its stranglehold on, uh, on the wealth of, of Iraq, on the 25 million citizens, um, to subjugate the Sunnis, control the country, and use it against their really big foe. Because they know, the Iranians know, that if they can turn this uh, tide and point toward Israel, they'll get the Sunni Muslims of Iraq fighting with the Shia Muslims in an effort to displace uh, the Jews in, in Israel. So from a national security perspective, we're showing you this internal battle, Shia and Sunni. The larger picture is the realignment of Iran and Iraq together. We've got to keep our yeah. eyes open for that. And they were in Seriously. a war against each other for how long? What eight was years. that, an eight-year war? A million people oh, killed. Over a million people yeah. because it was a million people just on one side, wasn't it? Uh, well, I, I, it could be more, but I... Yeah, I, it was I, like almost 10% of the population of... Nothing like sending your little children uh, running across a field to clear the mines so yeah. the military yeah. could get their equipment through. But what's, what's yeah, interesting fun. about what's happening with Iran and Iraq, if you, if you look at where the oil wealth is for Iraq... Um, it's a lot of it is um, controlled by the Kurds. Yes. And so pesky or Kurds, the, or as I Kurds say, the Kurds. And and the Kurds have, you know, they the have no, stand. they have no dog in this game. And uh, and they're also turning out to be very interesting in Syria. The Sunnis do not if have dogs in the game Syria. either. We do not have those filthy things. I was wondering if anybody was going to pick that up. Well, Thank you, Imam. Let's yeah. go about uh, 800 miles or so from, uh, from Baghdad to, um, that's, a, that's a guess, 800 miles, to Cairo. And uh, in our Mideast madness today, uh, we want to take a look at uh, Egypt. You know, uh, Egypt has, is off the front pages in the U.S. right now. But in terms of the Obama administration's support of the Muslim Brotherhood, and the, the anger in the uh, Islamic community with uh, the Obama administration for supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. But the support for Obama in the administration for supporting Muslim Brotherhood. This stuff gets complicated and totally convoluted. We're going to take a look at uh, uh, right now what's going on in Egypt and Mr. Morsi. Remember Mohammed Morsi, the uh, Egyptian who came to USC, California in 1978, got a degree did some teaching here, went back, became the president of Egypt, brought the Brotherhood screaming in about a year ago. Now he's MIA. Let's take a look at this video and we'll get you right up to date. These Morsi supporters are recovering from a difficult night. Allah. They say a march from Giza Square to Nada Square near Cairo University was surrounded and attacked by about 200 armed men. It was the first time. Uh, they shoot at us in, uh, in the ground, then they uh, uh, came upstairs and uh, shoot us from the roofs, so, and they targeted the, the tents here, so uh, there are many injured. There was plenty of damage in the streets, signs that a battle had taken place. The attack on the pro Morsi crowd lasted a number of hours and most of it happened in this street. And at least a dozen cars were also set on fire. Many more had their windows smashed. Many of those camped here say they won't be intimidated by what happened. The Egyptian people will continue and will uh, come here and will support the legitimate president of Morsi. Uh, General Sisi doesn't know, doesn't understand the natural of the Egyptian people. Across the other side of Cairo, in Nasser City, pro Morsi supporters say another rally was also attacked early on Tuesday morning. 
A doctor at the makeshift clinic in Rabba al Square says he treated about 60 people. Some had been shot. We have three major injuries, one in the skull, uh, another in the abdomen, another in the chest with gunshots. All of them are gunshots. Late on Monday, people for and against Morsi started fighting in central Cairo, wow. near the American embassy. One person was killed there. Both sides blame each other for starting it. The National Salvation Front, the main secular coalition group in Egypt, says the Muslim Brotherhood is responsible for attacks in Cairo, Alexandria and other cities. All Meanwhile, right. Egypt's interim government... The, um, that wasn't the, the video that uh, I had seen. That's another one. Um, that one's very interesting, though. Uh, it's indicating an ongoing... Um, civil unrest. What do you think is going to happen in Egypt? Morsi is MIA. It's nowhere to be found. Governments are now starting to say either charge him or release him, but you can't, <laughs> you can't kidnap him. Uh, what you do you can't think? Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> you can't hold him indefinitely while he's in prison? Was he in prison? If, yeah, if for he what? was Charging. imprisoned. For what? Well, was maybe he, he has for? been. Maybe it's a maybe it's a private court. Who well, knows? Well, it's not like Egypt is a democracy, <laughs> folks. Well, one yes, thing it we is. Do, in fact, he is the democratically <laughs> elected leader. <coughs> one thing we do know for absolute assuredness, according to the State Department, uh, Jay Carney, President Obama, and all all. Everybody who's in the know on what happened in Egypt, mm -hmm. it wasn't a coup. Yes, it wasn't it a coup. It wasn't a, coup. It oh, wasn't a military it's not a overthrow. Coup? It was not, not nothing like that. It, it, there, even though the military actually came in there and removed him from power, it mm -hmm. wasn't a coup. We know that. What was it? <laughs> it was. It's very hard to understand, as Jay Carney says. It's kind of hard to explain. It's, it's one of these kind of a. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, one of these uh, um, things are a little bit difficult, but once you understand the complexity, then 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 the situation becomes clear that it that it wasn't a coup. Because if it was a coup, then we couldn't give them one point <laughs> five billion dollars in aid. Well, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. Uh, it, I mean, it's really it really is confusing because. Um, the the aid money that President Obama wants to mm -hmm. give to Egypt, he wants to give to the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes, right. The military threw him out. He doesn't want to give it to the military, That's which right. is the guardian of the people now. Yeah. So if they say it's a coup, then he could accomplish his, his objective of not giving the money. Right. To the. They uh, said it was a coup in the first ten minutes. Yeah, this Everybody administration knows a coup. did. And by law, we cannot fund. Saw it, I mean, the Egypt with money, Renee, that's part of the deal. And so that's the reason the White House, the White House is dancing all over this Give thing. the money they to the to Syrian rebels. <laughs> the, speaking of the Syrian rebels, uh, look, you know, right about now, everybody driving in their car at uh, 59 minutes after 5 o'clock. Wow, that went left, by fast. Everybody driving their cars going, oh, God, man, don't you guys have anything happy to say? All you do is talk about war and dead bodies and Islam. Isn't oh, come on, we happy? made jihad fun. Isn't there yeah. anything happy to talk about? So let's for the next uh, 30 seconds. I wish I was an Oscar <laughs> Mayer. <laughs> hey, is that public domain? Yeah, yeah I was yeah, going to say, domain. okay, stop. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's campaign take talk. us out with a happy note, okay? You got 15 I, uh, seconds. Wish, wish I was an Oscar Mayer. I leader. wish I were. Don't you know how to do and the subjunctive? My <laughs> K. And then I can run for mayor of New York City <laughs> along with the Muslim Brotherhood. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mark, taking us <laughs> out. That taking us out. That ain't bad for a creepy ass cracker. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Bye. <laughs>